Previously, I showed you how to take a resin 3D print and make a solid metal piece using investment casting. It needs a special resin I used in that video, and multiple people asked, have you tried, have you tried normal resin? Well, no, I haven't, uh, and I never turned on an opportunity to burn stuff, so let's try that now. Here's a demonstration to show the issue. In the left, and already burning because some idiot forgot to start the camera, is the casting resin I used last time. It's got a wax content to it, and you can see that it, it burns and melts. It forms like a puddle on the brick. If I keep blasting with the torch, eventually it all burns away. I can even clean the dark spot off the brick with a the torch. There's nothing left. And the right is normal printing resin. No melting, just a super toxic smoke and eventually a burned chunk remains. No matter how much torch action I throw at it, it never actually burned away. I even got the whole chunk, like, yellow hot for a long time. And eventually I gave up. So there's this crud left over. That's gonna be inside the mold and it'll ruin the casting. I'm not the only person to try this. I'll link a video down below by Vogman where he shows what happens when you when you cast with normal resin. Now the short version is it ruins the surface tension because the metal goes in there and it's full of ashes and it just, it, it cruds it all up. It's a bad day. I have a potential solution, which we'll get to later. But before we get to that, let me show you what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna do the whole process as much as possible, exactly like last time, with a couple of key differences. First off, instead of the burnout resin, I'm going to use this. Standard Elegoo 8K Space Gray Resin. And I'll be printing it on the same Elegoo Mars 4 Max printer. Now this resin is not designed for burning out, but for normal printing, it's really nice. I printed a bunch of things with this combination, and the detail is pretty incredible. It's to the point where I can't get a picture using this DSLR camera that shows the detail. I probably need a macro lens. And I printed this mini file I got for free, I don't remember where, and it's got surface detail on this thing so good that I can't see it with my eyes. It wasn't until I took a picture and blew it up that I could actually see the fine detail. This is the level of print quality that we got with printers these days. I imagine a lot of the extra fine like surface details, if you were able to get them through the casting process, you'd probably polish them right off. Like that's that's the level of quality that I'm seeing from this printer and this resin. So if you just want plastic, I mean, this is this is pretty impressive. It's a nine inch printer, by the way, so it's bigger than most Mars printers. Well, it's not huge, but it, the machine's pretty compact, which I showed last time. So if you're short on space, but you still want a big plate, no, it's not a bad idea. So I kind of get why you would want to use normal resin, right? It's much cheaper, it prints easier, uh, there's fewer issues. The details are incredible. I don't think I got this kind of sharpness with the casting resin. Although I may not have had their settings just right. Normal resin is also easier to clean up if you have, a, especially if you have a wash station. That casting stuff is really sticky, and the curing process is much easier too. No bathing it in vegetable glycerin, and it didn't take a freaking hour to cure. And the print failure rate using normal resin is lower. Although. It wasn't that bad to begin with. The only issues I did have were caused by a ruined FEP sheet that I screwed up by failing to remove a test thing before starting another print. Whoops! So like I said, if you only want to print stuff in plastic, this Elegoo stuff and the Elegoo print printer is a pretty good setup. But what am I going to cast this time? Well, where did I put it? Here it is. One of these! This is a print in my head. Stand before I shave down my beard. This way, if the casting comes out looking all hideous, I can say, it was all on purpose. The detail is pretty incredible for sure. Uh, I did one thing here that's going to help with the burnout. I printed this hollow, and it's pretty thin-walled. My logic was, if the resin leaves ash behind, and I want less ash behind, I need less resin in there. I stuck them on a hot glue stick sprue in the same manner as last time, in the same pipe flask with the same 3D printed cap, use the same exact Prestige Optima plasker, vacuum the same way, with the same burnout schedule listed on the Prestige website, with one difference. Usually, when you're burning these out, after it's done, you cool it down to the temperature where you're going to pour and that temperature can vary. I didn't do that. I let it cool down to room temperature. You can kind of see it left a bunch of ashes in the bottom of the oven. There's also ashes in there, which I really couldn't get on camera, but they're there, trust me. And here's where the air compressor comes into play. So I fired it up, I, I, I spurts the little compressed air into all the little vents in the sprue. It's trying to get the ash to blow up. There was a lot of ash in there. And also a bit of fine white powder that I later learned was a terrible sign. I imagine something like a filigree ring would be very difficult to, to get all the ashes out of like the fine little details. Fortunately, the head's kind of chunky and fat. After that, I put it back in the oven, heated it up to the pouring temperature, melted the metal in the Vivor furnace to the exact same temperature. It's the same alloy, ZA12, zinc aluminum alloy, and cord. And then, here it is. It's, uh... It's not great. For one, I know for a fact that I do have a nose and it didn't show up on this one. It is on this one though. Second, the air compressor seems to have eroded a fair amount of the plaster away. That was the fine powder I talked about. You can kind of see in the up close shots what I mean. That's not ideal for castings, obviously. But here's the kicker. Uh, I didn't even get all the ash out. The surface area in a couple places is pretty good. 
There, there's one area of my head on the smaller one that looks pretty good, but other areas of that same head are all crusty, which is the result from like the ashes in there. It doesn't even look good after a polish. I, mean, I seriously look like I have leprosy or whatever it is. And that's not caused by metal flowability either. The other test showed really good flowability, especially since I'm not using the spin caster, I'm not using a vacuum. There were really fine details that the metal was able to get into, and this is exactly the same temperature to the degree. So it's still pretty conclusive, especially like side by side. Like there's no question this ring came out way better with the right resin. No crustiness anywhere on this thing. So from this point on, I will only be using resins designed for burnout. Now there's a lot of those, so I guess there's a lot more experimentation in my future, but fortunately, all these printers work with that resin too, so it's just a matter of buying the right bottle. All those ones I did before that turned out looking pretty nice, that was with the same Mars 4 Max. Same printer. So that was interesting, and now I got a lot of ashes to clean up around here. If you want more information on how I got a 3D scan of my own head, multiple of them actually, uh, I'll link a video at the end. If you want to take a look at this resin and that printer, I'll put a link down below in the pinned comment. I think as of recording this, they're on sale right now. And stay tuned for the future when I actually try to do this the right way. Vacuum rig's still incoming. I need a sign up for this. I said get lost once. That went over well. See you next time. Don't burn yourself. The video has ended. Go in peace.